Hi guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. And if you've stayed here since, I don't know, then thank you for sticking around. I know I haven't uploaded in a while, but I am back and I'm here to help you with all your candle making needs. So I know we're a little bit late into the year, but I wanted to create a video for anyone who's thinking of starting up a candle business or even just as a hobby and you want to have a checklist of all the all the um all the equipment and all the materials that you're going to need let me just say this now i think candle making it's not it, it requires a lot of patience because you're going to be trialing and testing out all these different types of materials you're going to be waiting around you're going to have all your stuff ready to go but you know you've tried this candle wax you've tried this fragrance oil it's not right you're gonna to have to wait another few weeks for this one thing to be delivered to your house it's going to take time especially if you want to start a candle business it is going to take a lot of patience so don't worry um don't think that just because this one small little detail has gone wrong then it's not meant to be like i'm sure a lot of us are in the same boat and when we first started a lot of things were going wrong it could be something even like a small detail like the printer paper for your labels it's just one of those things that's going to take time so just be patient with it because i know at the end the candle that you're going to produce is going to be absolutely worth every single frustrating moment of it so first thing you're going to need is candle wax and i'm going to tell you this now you're going to have a lot of variation of different types of wax if you've decided that you're going to use soy wax you're going to have different variations of soy waxes pillar waxes paraffin wax you're going to try a lot of different types of waxes and where it be different variations you're going to try a lot of different waxes from different companies as well also another thing if you are just starting out and you don't know what kind of candle wax to buy i would definitely recommend just buying candle wax in small quantities so either 500 to a kilo of it like maybe even a kilo is too much because you don't know anything about this wax you don't know the performance of the wax candle wax that someone else might highly recommend and you've seen in a video that the results are amazing it might be completely different for you because the conditions and the environment that you make your candle in is going to be completely different to anyone else's so for example i could make a candle here in london and it could turn out okay but someone who for example lives in a much colder or a much hotter country the candle that i the candle wax that i recommended is going to perform completely different for them it may be better it may be worse so that's what I mean by you're going to be trying out a lot of different types of candle waxes and don't be disheartened when someone recommends a candle wax and you know it doesn't work out well for you it could be a number of any things it could be down to you know how the candle wax was stored or who it was produced by or uh, maybe it doesn't sit well with the fragrance oil that you have bought for it it really is it really truly is all down to science like candle making is a great big massive science experiment the conditions are all different for everyone so i would definitely recommend buying a few variations of candle wax for you to try a candle wax that may not have worked out very well for me might be the perfect one for you next thing is candle wicks and again this same apply like I've had so many people message me and being like, oh, um, I have the exact same vessels as you, but the wick that you recommended is not working for me. Um, like, why? Should I size up? Should I size down? And honestly, you've just, you've got to try out different sizes and different types of candle wicks because again, the equipment that I have versus the equipment that you have, everything has an impact to the outcome of the candle itself. So definitely with candle wicks you're going to have a lot of different types there's lots of different types of you know even the the basic candle wick the one with the sustainer there's different types of candle wicks for soy wax there's different types for paraffin um, if you're thinking of doing wooden wicks then there's different sizes there's different thicknesses sometimes you might need to double wick that's one of the things that you need to consider as well so be prepared to buy a few I would never say buy in bulk to begin with just buy like if you can maybe like quantities of five ten if that's the minimum that you that, 
that you can get but you're not going to need 10. It's just one of those things with candle making it just takes a lot of trial and error so that's what I mean at the start do not be disheartened because it's one of those things that you just have to keep trying with different types of materials. Fragrance oils again a fragrance oil that you buy from one company and a fragrance oil that you buy from another company they are going to be completely different. A lot of companies, they make their own fragrance oils. Like a vanilla from one company is going to be completely different from another one. And you, a lot of time, they will smell amazing. But then when you make the actual candle, like the performance of the fragrance oil is either really good or is really bad. So you're going to be testing out a lot of different fragrances as well. Um... Definitely buy testers. I, I do think it is worth just buying testers first and being patient with it because I know what it's like when you really want to make like a big batch of candles. You're like, okay, I really want this to smell like jasmine and elderflower and you buy 100 millimeters of jasmine and elderflower and then it just doesn't smell right and it's like, mm. you get disheartened by it and then I've, I've made, I've, I've, that's happened to me many times. I've been disheartened and I'm just like, okay. I just leave this idea here and nothing will happen from it because a lot of the time you'll envision how you want your candle to look like and it could be down to even the most minute of the details like the texture of the paper or you know it, just the way that the candle the aesthetically doesn't speak to you anymore so it does take a while and um, it does take a lot of trial and testing. Okay, so you have everything that you need to make a candle. So let's move on to the actual candle making process. So if you're first starting out, you can just start with the basics. When I started, I had um, I had like one of those Pyrex jugs and I double boiled my wax all the time. I was literally just making like one candle at a time. Um, I didn't invest in any candle jugs or anything at the time. But when I was ready and when I started making more candles, I finally bought myself... Actually, I think it was a Christmas gift for my dad. Yeah, he bought me a candle jug. Um, I think this one's either two or five litres. But this one you can double boil. Or I've seen some people put it straight on the like electric electric hob thing. Um, which I personally have been too scared to do. I still double boil everything. So you can start off with that jug. If you decide to expand and you're making a lot more candles then I would recommend getting a candle wax warmer. Um, this one is from Auto Tool. They actually kindly gifted it to me. I'll leave the link in the description below. But this one I actually found was actually pretty affordable for the price and what it is as well. Like it can hold a lot of wax, it can insulate it and then you don't have to worry about constantly stirring it or anything. Um, so this one is really good if you're thinking of creating candles in large volumes. Also another thing that you're going to probably need is something to stir the wax with constantly if you're double boiling it. Um, there's probably better equipment out there but this is just something that has kept with me from the beginning. I literally just use old chopsticks because I can like break apart the wax and then I can just spin it and it's so easy to clean as well. I could just use a paper towel and just clean off the wax residue and then use it for the next one. Next thing you're going to need is a thermometer. This is the one that I use because you want an exact temperature. Um, I know some people use the ones where you could just hook it onto the candle jug. That is completely fine but I like to be precise with my temperatures. So this one again, I bought this one off Amazon or you can buy it anywhere to be fair. I think I only got it for like £10 or something like that. So a, temp a thermometer is something that you definitely need. Another thing that's really important are scales. You have to weigh out your candle wax and your fragrance oils. So you're definitely going to need a set of scales as well. Another thing you're going to need is something to stick your wicks down into your jars or vessels. So here I have three types. I actually started off using glue dots. Sometimes it works really well and sometimes like it will just completely melt off and the wick will float to the top. So I think if you're using glue dots then it's best for jars and not tins because when I use the glue dots for the tins, I don't know I, th I feel like it just kind of melted away a little bit and it just didn't hold so definitely glue dots if not glue dots then you can use sometimes these uh, candle felt pads which are a lot more stronger um, or what I've been using is sometimes all purpose or super glue for example the metal the metal casings that you need for the wooden wicks 
if you're not making candles in candle jars and things like that then you're going to need molds and molds nowadays they're very easily attainable from online because when i first started i could not find molds at all in the uk i had to buy them all from china but thankfully someone has caught a hold of this idea and uh, they've imported a lot from china now you can buy them from amazon's clp labels you're going to need these especially if you're going to be selling them this is a requirement for all candles it's simply just a, a label with uh, warnings and things that the customer like safety instructions that the customer needs to follow uh, this is essential if you are selling them because it can affect like your insurance and things like that so it's definitely a safety requirement it has to have your company details as well and like contact information i'll probably leave a link in the description with a web page as to what is fully required on an actual clp label okay i don't think i've missed anything out but again candle makers if there's anything else that i've missed out and you feel like someone could really benefit from using this kind of like equipment because i know there's certain things that can make candle making easier um feel free to let us know in the comments below i will also leave a list of everything that i have gone through in the description again i don't want to leave links because a lot of the things are not available to a lot of people in the world so i will leave the name there and you guys can just kind of like copy and paste it into your own google search and hopefully that will come up with some things that are available to your location i hope you guys enjoyed that video and it was helpful to someone out there and again if there's anything that you feel like i have missed then please let me know in the comments below and of course if there's any topics that you guys want me to cover feel free to let me know and i'll see you guys in the next video